All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get this uh, top plate taken off by first uh, removing the VTX SMA holder. Go ahead and gently remove the top plate, get that VTX off of there as well as the VTX shrink wrap. Camera, zip ties, bam, 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 bam. Start removing the stack. ESC connector, capacitor wiring, crossfire receiver and antenna, as well as the flight controller. All right, let's get these stack screws out of here. Free the capacitor and expose the XT60 connector. First, we're gonna start working on the camera. Go ahead and remove that protective cover off the back. So that way we can expose the board. Grab the white tube of thermal silicone from your waterproofing kit. Pierce the top and gently apply a thin layer all over the back of the camera board. Being careful around the wiring harness that you don't get any silicone into the wiring connector. Now we're going to add a layer around the sides of the camera just to make sure that we're creating a watertight seal. Now that we have it all on there, there's a better look at uh, the application. Doesn't have to look pretty, but let's go ahead and let that dry for a little bit. Grab the black rubber from your waterproofing kit. Go ahead and roll that out and measure it to six and a quarter for the first cut, seven and a half inches for the second cut, and then the third cut should just equal out to about seven and a half inches. Cut each group into four individual pieces. Grab the VTX and the VTX waterproofing housing. This is going to be the smallest of the three housings. Go ahead and open that up. Remove the blue backing, exposing the white sticky side. Grab one of the smaller six and a quarter rubber strips and line the outer perimeter of the VTX housing. And we're going to go ahead and speed this up for you a little bit, just so that way you can see the whole process. Go ahead and remove that white backing all the way around, exposing all that black rubber, and there you go. Cut a small piece of rubber and go ahead and wrap that around the antenna of the VTX as shown. This is how we're going to prep any kind of wires. There are two sides to the VTX housing and the difference can be told by the width. We want the antenna coming out the smaller side. There will be two sizes of shrink wrap. Next is the crossfire receiver. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the shrink wrap and the antenna from the receiver. I'm going to install Immortal T on this one before I was running an Immortal L. Grab one of the smaller heat shrinks. Uh, you may have to stretch this one out a little bit to fit over the crossfire receiver. Go ahead and put that over there like that. And slide that down to the flight controller. Next we're going to put one on the uh, VTX wiring and then one on the camera wiring as well. Go ahead and cut off a little piece of rubber, um, ball it up, roll it out, and next we're actually going to grab the flight controller housing, and because the flight controller is 20 by 20, we're going to cut off these 30 by 30 pegs. That's just for mounting, so we don't need the 30 by 30, and vice versa, if you had a 30 by 30, you would cut out the inside 20 by 20s. So make sure that that looks all right. Looks good. Take the piece of rolled rubber and wrap that around the VTX wiring, uh, just like so. And we're going to go ahead and take another piece of rubber and roll it out and put that around the crossfire receiver as well. And if you notice where we're putting the rubber, it's on the outer perimeter of that flight controller housing. Uh, that's very important. We're going to go ahead and put another roll of rubber around the wiring at the outer perimeter of the, the camera wiring as well. And uh, now that we have the rubber where we need it, 
and we'll go ahead and heat shrink the rubber with the heat gun. Again, pressing and rolling the rubber into the wire, just like so. Go ahead and connect the ESC harness to the flight controller. And you want to angle it off the edge uh, towards the outer perimeter of that, just like we've been doing for the rest of the wiring. And definitely, you know, definitely work that rubber into the wire. Spread the wires out, roll your fingers, and then go ahead and put a, a heat shrink on it. And then also around the connector as well, see? And let's go ahead and heat shrink that. Perfect. Moving on to the receiver, go ahead and cut a piece of the rubber and place it around the wiring just as shown. And then now we want to measure out the antenna and put a piece around the antenna right where it meets the rubber of the receiver. Slide the heat shrink over the receiver. Take a small piece of rubber, roll it up, stick it in the top of the heat shrink as seen. We'll blast it with a little heat, making sure to press the rubber as it heats and cut off any excess rubber. All right, that's your extra heat shrink. You can go ahead and discard that or put it to the side. Let's start wiring up the VTX. As you plug in the VTX, take notice of where the wire meets the rubber perimeter. Take a piece of rubber, wrap it around the wire where marked. You will need a piece of shrink wrap as well. Go ahead and heat that up and roll the rubber in your fingers. Go ahead and squeeze that in there really good. The rubber may stick to your fingers, so just use a big ball of the rubber to get it off your fingers. It comes off pretty easily. Now go ahead and bend that back. That'll give you better access to plugging in the VTX wiring. Take the last rubber strip out of the short pile and go ahead and line the outer perimeter, making sure that you're going over the antenna and the VTX wiring. We're pretty much making a rubber sandwich with the rubber insulated wire and antenna. We're going to peel back the heat shrink to reveal the white sticky layer. As we are aligning the housing envelope, we want to double check the orientation just to make sure the holes align correctly. Be mindful that you don't accidentally flip it in the wrong way. Take your time here. Once aligned, apply gentle pressure to each corner hole until you feel each hole pop into place. Once all four corners are secured, start pressing the aluminum heat sink into the VTX. Now start applying pressure to the outer perimeter where the rubber is located. Continue to press the rubber until you are confident you have created a watertight seal. Go ahead and grab the ESC housing envelope. Here's a better look at it. Let's go ahead and pull that apart. It doesn't matter which side you start with. We'll grab the heat shrink. Go ahead and remove that blue back to expose the white sticky side. Go ahead and take a rubber strip and line the outer perimeter of the ESC housing. There's a better look at it. Make sure that rubber's sticky. Remove the four arm standoffs. And for my setup, um, because the ESC wire, the ESC to flight controller wire is so short, I'm having to mount my ESC in the lower right hand corner. Next, we're going to take a piece of rubber and measure it out to the side of the ESC where the motor wires come out. If you need, bend back the ESC envelope housing to make it easier to fit the rubber around the motor wiring. Once in, you want to massage the rubber into the motor wires as shown. Go ahead and grab another piece of rubber, and we're going to do the exact same to the opposite side, making sure to squeeze the rubber into the motor wires evenly. Now on to the capacitor wiring. Take a small piece of rubber, rolling it into a ball, roll it out, and then wrap it around. Do this for both the positive and negative capacitor wire. Next, we're on to the battery lead. Repeat the same steps as we did for the capacitor wiring, just on a bigger scale. Go ahead and get those aligned properly. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove the white strip from the back of the rubber. Start massaging the motor wires into the rubber housing. Do the same for all the wires we've prepared. Again, making sure you are confident in the seal you are creating. 
Take the last ESC rubber strip and go ahead and line the outer perimeter of the ESC housing. Apply firm pressure as you work the rubber into itself, creating the final seal we need for the enclosure. However, we did forget one thing. We forgot to install the flight controller wire harness. So make sure you don't forget, but if you do, here's how you would correct it. Plug in the wire harness, take a strip of rubber and place that over the ESC wire harness. Now we're ready for the top housing. Go ahead and remove the blue backing, lining up the corners, and firmly press each corner hole into position. Then go ahead and start pressing the heat sink into the ESC. Once you're confident in the heat sink adhesion, go ahead and start pressing the outer perimeter rubber into itself. Continue to press the perimeter until you're confident in the seal you have created. Grab your conformal coating and let's go ahead and dab the battery lead and capacitor solder joints. Grab the USB micro extension, plug it into the flight controller. We suggest testing for connectivity. Finally, grab the flight controller housing. It's the last housing we have to prepare for waterproofing. Grab a rubber strip and go ahead and just like we've done before, outline the outer perimeter of the flight controller housing. If yours looks like ours, you did a great job. Go ahead and remove the white backing. Place the top housing on the flight controller as shown. We're using the ESC wire harness that came with the flight controller and it's definitely short, so double check the length just to make sure you have enough room. Gently and firmly press the flight controller wires into the outer perimeter rubber. Take another strip of rubber and add a second layer to the outer perimeter. Gently and firmly pressing into each of the flight controller wires as you make your way around. Really take your time here. The more time you spend here, the less time you'll have to worry about possible leaks later. Double and triple check your work here. It's really important. Go ahead and remove the white backing. Grab the bottom flight controller housing. I'm just using this cup to hold the flight controller in place while I put the bottom housing on the flight controller. Press the corners into place. Gently and firmly press the heat sink into the flight controller. The end result should look like it's been vacuum sealed. Finally, go ahead and start pressing the outer perimeter of the rubber, double and triple checking where all the wires are coming out of the housing. Go ahead and flip over the flight controller and the wiring harness looks good. Let's go ahead and screw in the four inner standoffs. Start by pressing the ESC housing into one side of the standoffs and gently press down. You'll have two sizes of housing spacers. For this part, we're gonna go ahead and use the thicker or taller spacer. These will go in the front of the frame by the camera in between the ESC housing and the flight controller housing. Next, we have the immortal T holder. This will go on the back of the frame. Just press them over the back standoffs and gently press down until it's snugly against the bottom of the frame. Now that the ESC housing is secured to the frame, we're going to go ahead and start preparing the VTX mount. Make sure the wire routing is correct. Gently and firmly start pressing the VTX onto the standoffs. Again, making sure that all your wire routing is correct and nothing is pinched. Finally, we need the smaller housing spacers from before. Go ahead and press those down onto the VTX. And finally, we're going to go ahead and press down the flight controller over the VTX as well as pressing over the front standoffs. Take a look at how far we've come so far, and here's a few different angles for you. Go ahead and start pressing down the VTX, and then also the flight controller and ESC housing, so that way it's flush with the frame. The VTX will hang in the middle of the frame because it's staggered in between the flight controller and ESC. Take the VTX SMA, and let's go ahead and push that underneath the VTX as shown and mount that to the standoffs in the back. These are for the camera mount. Let's go ahead and get that prepped up. 
These are optional, but they go in between the camera and the camera mount. There's a better look. Now we're going to mount the opposite side. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and get the uh, dielectric grease and put that into the uh, connector there. Go ahead and plug in the connector. Now we're going to add a little bit of the dielectric grease into the connector as shown. Just giving a little bit of a twist to shorten the camera cable. And let's go ahead and install that. Nice. Let's put some more dielectric grease around the XT60 connector. There we go. As well as inside the XT60 connector. Next, we're going to go ahead and mount the capacitor. Now, let's go ahead and take a break and just examine how far we've gotten. Mounting the top plate is as easy as lining up the front of the plate with the notches on the camera mount, start at a diagonal, and then move it downward. Once you have the top plate on, let's go ahead and get that sucker screwed in. Just make sure the flat top screws go in the middle section of the frame and the button head screws go on the front and the rear of the frame. Now let's go ahead and get the GoPro mount. Two screws. On each side, four screws total, and you're good to go. Grab your VTX antenna, and let's go ahead and get that mounted. And we are almost done, guys. Now for the last part, we are going to install the foam floaty mount. This is a critical aspect of the build. For example, if you were to submerge into water, this is what keeps you afloat and right side up, so then that way you can actually take off from the water. This is where you're going to want to mock up the orientation of your battery so you can get an idea of where the additional Velcro strips are going to go for the foam floaty. The recommended orientation for the additional Velcro strips is the hook side or rough side up and the soft side or loop side on the outside of the foam floaty. On my build, I'm going to give enough space for the GoPro to move in flight and not hit the floaty. And you want the Velcro straps tight, but not too tight that if you hit something, they're going to bust open. And that's it, guys. We made it. We're at the end of the build. At this point, you should have a waterproofed, watertight quad. The last little bit is just putting a little bit of rubber over the USB connector of the flight controller.